your say on BBC Lincolnshire. Email peter.levy at bbc.co.uk. The Peter Levy Show on BBC Lincolnshire. Campaign to protect rural England have hit out at what they call rural clutter. Uh, by that, they mean the number of unnecessary road signs, pylons and phone masks, which they say are making the countryside look like a scrapyard. The CPRE is calling for companies and the government to take immediate action to tidy up the countryside. Fiona Cowan is from the campaign to protect rural England in the East Midlands region, and she's on the line now. Hello, Fiona. Hello there. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So, uh, in your part of the world, give me an example of, uh, of what is, is clutter. Um, probably the most obvious uh, sign of clutter. We're very lucky in my little part of the borders of uh, Northamptonshire and Lincolnshire. We don't have a huge number of pylons cluttering things up. But what we do get is a proliferation of road signs. So you'll get the signs pointing at where you need to go. So you've got the distant, far away places. Then you've got the local places as you get closer to the junction. And then you'll have the ones that say, slow down, there's a bend, the road narrows, the road widens, there's a junction, there's a this, there's a that. And before you know it, you've passed six signs, and I very much doubt whether you've taken in the gist of two of them. Oh, I like those signs, because they, they, they warn you what's coming up, don't they? I mean, isn't that, isn't that what, what they, they were put there for in the first place? I'm sure it was, but if you think back, there was a time, I'm not sure whether, are you old enough to remember a time when there were fewer signs on the roads and people used their eyes? They looked out of the windows, <laughs> and they looked out of the mirrors in the car to see what was going on round <laughs> about them, and they could tell, oh, there's a bend up ahead, perhaps I better turn the wheel a little bit, or I can't see over the brow of this hill, perhaps I'll slow down and right. I won't overtake. Okay, good point, well made. Um, I mean, we could have some signs at the side of the road as well next that saying, you know, be careful, the sun is hot. Or you could have some more signs saying, be careful, there's some signs coming up, look out for them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you make a good point. Uh, what about pylons, though? Uh, th th you know, w w we need those, otherwise we would have no electricity. We do need pylons, and some pylons are absolutely beautiful, but the trouble with pylons is, they, they uh, have you ever walked past a field where there's pylons? They hum, they're, they're like soldiers crowding across the landscape. If you imagine the um, a landscape you know where there are pylons, and then imagine it without them, those wires can all go underground in most cases. There are some places where well, that's not possible. Absolutely. Yeah, it costs an awful lot more money to do it's that. Generally, yes, it's generally cheaper to stick up some pylons, but the pylons need maintenance too. And there are also some uh, people who are concerned about health concerns about um, it being too close to pylons. Now, that's not been proved absolutely one way or the other. I'm sure we'd all rather be safe than sorry. But you know, pylons are—they are generally unsightly on a landscape, and we have so little of our countryside left in this country that I think we should really be looking after it. And if we have the option to go underground, why not? consider it. Yeah, even, even, though, even though it's going to cost more. Well, lots of things cost more. Well, we'll have to pay for it. We'll pay for it on our electricity bills. Uh, uh, if, if, they, if they start to do that, it would cost an awful lot more. I wonder how much less it costs to put cables underground that then lie undisturbed than that go up in the air and then are corroded or affected by bird strike, rust, corrosion, the weather. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to see the calculations on that. What about, all, what about all these brown signs which are, uh, have sprung up over the last few years telling you, you know, that there's uh, the Fiona Cowan farm shop down the road. Uh, do we want all them? Because they're just adverts for businesses, really, aren't they? I think, well, speaking personally, I think the brown signs tend to be a little bit more restrained. They don't leap out of the background at you. I think that's the whole point why they've done them in brown rather than in a much brighter colour. Um, the idea is if you're interested in the heritage or the um, attractions of a local area, then you will have someone in the car who's looking out for the brown signs to say turn left for the Peter Levy Castle or whatever it might be. Um, the ones that you really need to see are the ones that tell you where to go and when there's an obstacle coming up that you couldn't anticipate if you're just being observant and driving properly. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, good, good point. Well made. Um, what about these people I've been hearing about this morning, these people who've got nice big gardens, the posh people that flog them off so that people can build houses on them? Uh, they call, what do they call them? Ga they is it garden grabbers? Garden grabbers, yes. What would you like me to say about those? Well, what, what do you think about people who uh, who, who sell off their land? Because presumably um, that's something that you would feel you would feel very strongly about. If you've got a row of houses and they've all got big gardens, there's a lot of green there. Or, or are you not bothered about that because you can't go and sit on their grass? No, it's not really about that. It's to do with the fact that there is a huge amount of what's called brownfield land, which is land that has been used for something else, sitting already in towns. It's near to shops, it's near to roads, it's near to public transport, it's already got services coming into it. And that land 
is more expensive to develop because you have to pay VAT on it. If you grub up some greenfield land, which could be somebody's garden or it could be a field on the outskirts of a village, you don't pay VAT on the cost of developing that land. Now, that's, no, that's not the developer's fault. It's not the local people's fault. It's not the landowner's fault. It's because the system isn't quite right. And I think that's really what we're arguing about here. It's not about people who sell their big gardens because perhaps they can't look after them in, anymore. People don't have the amount of time to look after big gardens. Of course, we all appreciate that. But it's actually to do with more of a policy of making sure that the first thing we do is, if we need more land for housing, is put it where there is land that should be used for that sort of thing, where the services are much more available. It's a much more sustainable solution. Very interesting to talk to you, Fiona. We'd like some examples of uh, some clutter in uh, especially parts of East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire, the uh, rural parts. Very good to have you on the programme today. Thank you very much Lovely indeed. Lovely to talk to you. Bye. Bye-bye. I can hear her heart.